Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. I was giving some corporate training earlier today, and as usual, when we started to talk about list comprehensions, all sorts of questions and issues came up. And one of the main ones was, how are list comprehensions different from just a rewritten version of a regular for loop? So I want to show you two examples, or an example written in two different ways, regular for loop and then a list comprehension. And then I'm going to put them into functions, and I'm going to disassemble those functions. And you're going to see, actually, that they're wildly different behind the scenes. So my example, the one I always like to use, is I'm going to say here, something like this. I'm going to say 1, well, let's do regular for loop, regular for loop first, output equals an empty list for one number in range 10. And we'll say here, output append. And we'll say here one number to the second power. So of course, when we're done with this, output is going to contain 10 numbers, the numbers 0 through 9 inclusive, each of them squared. And then that's our list. OK, so far so good. That's a regular for loop, not the Pythonic way to do it, but definitely like an OK way to do it. It will still work. As I like to say, unfortunately, it works. So how could we do this as a list comprehension? We would say here output equals one number to the second power for one number in range 10. And sure enough, if we look at output, we get exactly the same results. So it looks very often to people who are starting off in Python like this is just one is just a rewritten version of the other. Really, they're not that different. But it turns out that they are actually different. That there's a different bunch of stuff going on in here. And in many ways, it's easiest to see and it's most surprising if we put these into functions. So I'm going to copy this first one here. I'm going to put it into def traditional, and we'll call this, yeah, I'll just do this this way. And instead of saying output, I'll say return output, because that's what you have to do in a function. And I'm going to say here, this is going to be in def comprehension. And I'm not even going to assign it, I'm just going to say here, return this list comprehension. That'll give our list comprehension a little bit of an edge, I know, but okay. So now I have these two functions. So I'm going to load up this. This is the model uh, module in the standard library that allows us to disassemble things. I'm going to say here dis dot dis of traditional. And let's take a look at what's going on when we write such a function. How does Python see it? How does it compile it? So it's going to start off by building a list. It's going to create a new empty list. And it's going to store fast, meaning store it as a local variable into output. Then it's going to set up a loop. And then it's going to load the global range 10. So it has to loop. Loop over what? Well, it's going to loop over range 10. It's going to call that function. And then whatever we get back from range 10, which is, of course, a range object, it's going to get that range object's iterator. And then it's going to iterate over it. Here is our loop from here until line 34. So for each iteration, it's going to store fast, store in a local variable, one number, the current iteration, the current value we got back from the iterator. We're going to load then the output local variable, load the method append on it, load the one number value, load the constant to. We're going to put it to a power. So basically what it's saying here is append to output one number to the second power. That's what we want to do anyway, right? And then we go back and we go back and we go back until we're done with the loop, at which point we pop this block, load the value of output, and return it. So that's how Python sees our traditional version of things. If a list comprehension is just a rewritten Python for loop, then we're going to see something very similar. But actually going to see this dot this of our comprehension. It's going to look wildly different. Look what we've got here. Load const. What the heck is load const? And then load our const here. And then like make a function. And then load global. What the heck is going on here? Well, it turns out that when Python compiles our functions, it notices certain types of code, and sometimes they'll just throw it out. If it knows you can't get to a certain line of code, it just won't even turn into bytecodes. But here it turns out that our list comprehension was actually compiled into its own code object. And if you're not familiar with code objects, the idea is that when you create your function, when you define your function, the function becomes a function object, and inside of that function object is a code object. You can get to it via dunder code, the dunder code attribute. So what's happening is we have like a micro function inside of our function thanks to the list comprehension. And this is actually stored as a constant. I'll show you that in a moment. So basically what's happened is we're getting this constant here. And then basically Python is using it. Uh, and then it's going to just load the range. And it's going to call our function. It's going to call the list comprehension as if it were a function. And we're going to iterate over that. And then we're going to return its value. So you can see that we actually have many, many fewer bytecodes here 
as a result of that. And you could argue, okay, well, we also have these bytecodes here. But even all together, we have what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 19 lines there. Okay, I guess you could argue it's about the same thing. Fine, fine, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. I guess it's about the same. So where is this code object being stored? Well, we have a hint as to where it's being stored with this load const. If I look at comprehension, comprehension is a function. It's an object in the Python world. And again, if we go into Dunder code, that's the comprehension functions code object. We're going to see, okay, it has, it's a code object, fine. But all objects in Python have attributes. If we go into that code object, we look at co consts. Here are the constants we have, and look at this. Our constants here, we actually have a code object here, right? So none is always constant zero. We then have a code object. This is our list comprehension. We have the local variables for the list comprehension, and then we have 10, which is a constant that we use inside of our function. So what's happening basically is that <laughs> Python is loading up this pre-compiled function, this list comprehension. It's loading up the local variables for our list comprehension. It's then applying all these, you know, make functions, like applying our, our function that we didn't even know was a function, but it's doing that behind the scenes, and then it's running it. And so, yeah, behind the scenes, Python is doing something very, very different. Now, does this result in any difference in performance? So I am not an expert in performance analytics or anything, but I do know enough to be dangerous and possibly foolish here in demonstrating this. So there is actually a really great thing in Jupyter called Time It. And this is, of course, the regular Time It module that comes with Python. It's just in a nice uh, magic uh, command that we can use within Jupyter. So I'm going to say Time It here on traditional. Is that what I called it? What did I call that function? I call yeah, traditional, just in traditional. And I'm going to run that function now. And it's going to run it a whole bunch of times. Right? And it's going to run traditional. It doesn't get any arguments here. And what's going to happen is it's going to say, oh, well, we ran this and it took 3.54 microseconds per uh, iteration. I'm going to run comprehension here. And what happens is it's going to run a whole lot of different loops. Right? So it's going to run our function again and again and again. It's going to take the average speed of them. So we see basically that our traditional function took 3.54 microseconds in order to run, whereas our comprehension version took 3.18 microseconds. Now, I wouldn't say this is like a major difference, but if we say 3.18 divided by 3.54, we can see that basically we've shaved 10% off of the time of our function having to run. And in many ways, that's because we already have this byte compiled list comprehension object ready. We don't need to do anything more. It's just like pulled out of there. So that's the difference, at least behind the scenes, between list comprehensions and regular old for loops. It partly addresses why you would want to use list comprehensions over for loops, but generally speaking, experienced Python developers see them as two different things, even though they both use the iterative protocol. And seeing that list comprehensions are a little bit faster, about 10% faster it would seem in my tests, uh, than regular old for loops, gives us another reason to try to use them, and maybe a reason that will encourage you to look into using them more. If you have more questions about Python, you can address them to me. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. You can reach me via email. And I'll be back here with more Python tips in the near future.